If you clicked on this video, you've probably used image trace once or twice, and that's okay. I have too. And most of the time, people, they go online, they find a PNG or a JPEG, they paste it into Illustrator, they click that image trace button, and it's a quick and dirty way of getting a vector, right? Or maybe you're like me and you pasted your Photoshop design into Illustrator, you clicked image trace, and you were just so stoked about what you're about to see, and then you were let down because image trace completely bombed it, destroyed all the detail. And the answer is simple, image trace has a problem. We're gonna get to the bottom of it, and I'm gonna show you guys how to fix it. By the end of the video, you're gonna gain some new skills, and you're gonna become a vector master. Speaking of new skills, I've been diving into Blender lately using Skillshare, which has been incredibly helpful, and they happen to be today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community that will help you explore, discover, and enhance your creative skills. There's classes on various topics such as photography, graphic design. You can type whatever you wanna learn and choose from a plethora of classes. I've been taking a Blender course by K1, and it has been a game changer for me. It's helped me simplify Blender in a way that I can actually understand the in-depth exploration of node systems and enabled me to create life like water and fog, significantly enhancing my render as you can see. I have great news, the first 500 people to join Skillshare using my link will get one month premium for free, which means you guys can start learning some new skills today Pretty cool. So why is image trace bad? Well, the short answer is it's not always bad. It works for most people, in fact. When you're dealing with multicolored designs, such as this wolf design that I did, you will see really quickly that image trace falls apart. And to demonstrate that, we're gonna do a fun experiment. I have three images right here. One is the raster image from Photoshop. One is the new method I'm about to show you to vector. And one is image trace. Can you spot the image trace? Take a pause. Let me know which one you think it is. If you chose B for image trace, you are absolutely correct. B just lacks detail, the colors are super off, and there's just like weird tones being added. It's not a great option for printing, let's just put it that way. But if you compare A and C, A is actually the new method of vectoring that I'm about to show you, and then C is the original Photoshop raster design, and they look so similar. So the way this is going to work is we're gonna take each layer and basically convert it to a vector layer, which is super simple. But in order to do this, we actually need to have colors separated. Now, you can do this with as many colors as you want. You can have one color, black and white. You can have up to 100,000 colors. It doesn't matter is what I'm saying. We're gonna go ahead and go into the layers real quick, which you can see on the right-hand side. And as you can see, I have a white folder. Let's hide that. I have the red folder, and then I have the base, the color base. So first step is we want to hold in Command or Alt if you're on a PC, and let's select the thumbnail, okay? And that's going to make a selection. Now with this selection, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click with our selection tools, any selection tool works. We're gonna right click anywhere on the selection and you're gonna see something that says make work path. This is so important guys, you need this in order to make this entire thing work. So let's go ahead and click make work path and then we're gonna choose a tolerance of one. You can try one, two, three, four. I like one, I think you get better detail that way. Let's go ahead and uh, press okay and there you go. Let it do its thing, it's gonna take a second. And as you can see, it already created these vector points, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, what we need to do is actually create a solid color with this. What that just did is it actually created a vector layer with this color that we're uh, selecting from the color picker. Now, I don't have my swatches up. Let's go ahead and press okay. And then I'm gonna turn my color swatches on and you can see my colors right there. So all you have to do to change the color is there's like a little box on the right corner of your th thumbnail here. Let's just click on that twice and it's gonna pull up the color picker and we can just select the color that we need and press okay. And there you go, simple. Now we have to do this for every color. So let's go ahead and title this, uh, I don't know, color one, it doesn't even matter actually. And let's drag that above everything. And now let's go ahead and go to red and we're gonna do the same exact process. We can hide color one for now on the top and I'm gonna duplicate red and let's just merge this group together. Now I have my red isolated on its own layer. It's a raster layer. I'm gonna hold in Command or Alt again. Remember, if you're on a PC, it's Alt. If you're on a Mac, it's uh, Command. Let's left click on the thumbnail. It's gonna make a selection. And then we're just going to right click with the selection tool and we're gonna go make work path again. Choose the same tolerance, press OK. Create a new solid layer, okay? And what that's going to do is again, it's going to create that vector layer and we wanna make this the same red. So let's color pick that, press OK, and there you go. Now you have a color separation. You can change the colors if you need to, but how do we export it to Adobe Illustrator? It's super simple, guys. We're gonna go to File, Export, and actually, no, we're gonna go File, Save a Copy, and then you're gonna save this as Photoshop EPS. So we can name this Wolf Color Sep 
vectors, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And let's go ahead and press save. Next dialog box is going to be called EPS options. You want to make sure you check include vector data. If this is unchecked, you're going to have issues. It's not going to work properly. OK, so you want to include vector data and then you want to press OK. It's going to save it. This is where your mind's going to be blown, because when you go to the layers now, you'll see a group. Let's open that and you'll see each and every color that we just saved from Photoshop imported into Illustrator as a vector. And let me show you exactly what that looks like. So first, let's just title these the colors that we're trying to go for. So let's just go red. And then this can be, um, I don't even know. It's kind of like a brown color. I don't know the exact color. But you're going to notice there's like annoying, there's an annoying background. If you try to move it, it's not going to work. So what we could do is we could just select everything by pressing Command A, right click, and let's just click ungroup. And that's going to ungroup the background so I can then delete it. Another issue I see is I have this like red speck right here. So it's a good opportunity to also fix that. So I could just select that little speck and click delete on my keyboard. Super simple. But if I zoom in, you could just see how much more detail we're getting. Now that we ungroup that, what we could do is we can actually extend this background layer just like this. And also this is a vector, right? So we can actually, you know, import this and resize it to any size we want to fit our screen printing needs or maybe you're trying to print a poster, whatever it may be, you can just resize it because it's a vector. It's scalable. Um, it's not a raster image. So when you go to scale it up, it's not going to lose quality. So let's go ahead and actually toggle on each color or off each color and look at them individually. So that is the base color. Now let's toggle on the red. You can see the red and then we have the white, of course, for those highlights. Any color that you select, you're going to notice the blue outline, which is basically the vector points. And uh, yeah, let's toggle on each color now. Does image trace have a problem? Yes, but we have a solution and it's pretty cool. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below what you think about this method. Are you going to be using it? And consider subscribing if you guys enjoyed this video. I make videos on graphic design, cameras, a bunch of stuff that I'm into. So if you guys are into the creative stuff, this channel is definitely for you. And don't forget the first 500 people to join Skillshare using my link in the description of this video will get Skillshare premium completely free for one month. All right, guys, I'll see you later.